Australia's political landscape has always been dominated by two parties, Labor and the Liberals. But with rumours floating around about a potential federal election this year, some voters say they've been left unimpressed by the status quo and are looking for something different. That's where the new Liberals come in. They've claimed that they will heal the political crisis by changing the very political culture itself and are creating a wave of change which will sweep across the nation and wash away the professional politicians. I sat down with their founder, Victor Klein, to discuss the party. We're coming along with a set of policies that are just common sense, just just what people uh, want to have restored to this country. I mean, to give you an example, we you may have seen when you, you've gone on our website that we start with a charter of core values that people can call us out on, and that in itself is unique for political parties because most political parties want to be able to change their core values as often as their shirts, you know. Um, But we drafted that set of core values, uh, the founders of the party, but we were all pretty much, you know, uh, ex-Labor voters and so on. Um, We wanted to make sure that what we thought was essential uh, to Australian democracy uh, was essential to other people. So we showed it to um, uh, a friend who, uh, uh, whose uh, father had been press secretary to Sir Robert Menzies, so, you know, a, a, a liberal pedigree going right back for 50 or 60 years. We showed it to uh, a, a Greens voter um, who was so left that he, he, you know, considers the Greens not far enough left and... Um, and we showed it to someone from the Christian Democrats. So you couldn't get a bigger cross-section. And everyone agreed with every one of those points in the Charter of Core Values. And, and, and I realised then, because I'd been the, the drafter of that. And by the way, it, it, I thought it would take me weeks. It took me about 45 minutes to draft that. So it was something that was in my head that it was dying to come out. Um, so I realised that I hadn't drafted a political document. I drafted something that was about basic needs of human beings um and i and and i sorry long-winded way of saying i think that the other parties have lost sight of 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 the voter uh and so the time is right for someone to come along like us and that's that's how we will take government eventually yeah who would you actually be able to form government with? I know I'm pretty sure you said on Twitter that you'd be reluctant to do a coalition with uh, Labor, for example. But uh, in your words, who who would you form government with? Oh, right. Sorry, I'm I'm, I'm being a mis- bit misleading. There. When I say form government, I mean eventually, not the forthcoming election. But no, maybe no, no, absolutely, up. yeah. No, no, no. We, we, I, we I get that. But form. in the in the long term, who who would you be able to form government with? Well. W- I guess we wouldn't. That's the point. We, we would be looking to eventually form government in our own right. But prior to that, let's say we went to this election, we, we got a few senators elected, a few lower house people elected. In the short term, um, we wouldn't form government with anybody because if we formed government with anybody else, we would have to adhere to what their values are and we would have to abandon our own charter of core values. So what we would do is we would guarantee supply um, but we wouldn't guarantee confidence and we would vote on every piece of legislation according to its merits and whether it fitted with what we believed and what we had gone to the electorate with. Now, some people would say that would make it very hard, let's say, for a Labor government to, to govern, but I'd look at it this way and say it would ensure uh, that they governed according to what the people wanted. Yep. And uh, you have described your party as socially progressive. How do you actually define that? That's a really good question. Um, I suppose it means that there's a there's a. I suppose it's put as a as a juxtaposition to to the current government, which is socially regressive. So uh, all the things like. Uh, uh, gay marriage, um, equality of opportunity, um, those sort of things that uh, full employment, all those things that the government doesn't seem to care about, they're the things that, that matter to us. It's a, it's a vague term, but it's, it's, it's the sort of forward slogan that you have to have to give people a general idea of what you're talking about. Um, 
I would say that it's at the core of social progressiveness um, to want to have a strong climate policy um, and, to, and to save our planet from destruction. Um, so I guess what we say is we're economically responsible and socially progressive and, and so there's this distinction it's kind of artificial, but people make this distinction between economic questions and social questions. Um, and, and so something like climate becomes a social question um, because, because people are saying, well, whatever the economic cost, we have to save our planet. So I guess, I guess uh, we are that sort of party that's, that's looking to stamp out corruption in politics, have a good federal ICAC, to have a strong climate policy, to get full employment, to make the corporations pay their tax. I guess they're all socially progressive policies. They, it sounds kind of funny when you say it because when you have to say it out loud because they're just common sense. To have to, to, have to call them social progressiveness, I think is a bit, is a bit unnecessary. But unless you do that, um, people don't understand how different you are from the governing party. Yeah. Um, now, we were speaking to a lot of people about uh, 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 who would they vote for other than the major two parties. A few mentioned uh, your party, but others mentioned uh, parties like the Centre Alliance, uh, the uh, mm. Animal Justice Party, uh, Independence mm. a lot, the Australian Democrats. How do you? How are you able to cut through the noise and all these different parties and uh, be different if you're actually hoping to win an election in you know a decade or so? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I think because we're and and I mean all those parties have their place and and I think it's wonderful and I, I think diversity in politics is a great thing, but I think that we are creating a true liberal party, um, as that word is understood around the world and has been for a couple of hundred years. It means a a party that believes in equality of opportunity, justice, um, and and. Uh, the freedom of the individual, but very importantly, a strong place for government in, uh, in ensuring that when that person exercises their freedom, they don't impinge on the freedom of, the other, of others. So, for example, uh, a, a, a true liberal party in government, multinational wants to trade in Australia, so sure, you can come and trade in Australia, but when you pay no tax, you're impinging on the freedom of everyone else, and we would step in to make sure they did. Now, I think that this country has a long tradition of uh, responding to true Liberal parties. I mean, Menzies was in power for 23 years. He provided, presided over the, the most prosperous period in Australian history in the 50s and 60s. Um, he had literally full employment, not as people define it now to mean, oh, what's full employment? Oh, it's 5% unemployed. No, real full employment, minimal inflation. We were an egalitarian society. I think that's what people of my generation yearn to get back. Uh, that's what people of, uh, you know, the millennial generation have never known and really deserve to know. Um, and I think we are presenting that and we are a broad-based party with policies on everything um, and, you know, Greens, Animal Justice, um, all these people, you know, terrific, but they have limited values. Uh, sorry, I mean limited value. I mean their value, their number of values are limited um, to certain areas. Um, and the major parties have both lost their way. Uh, and so we're presenting Australians with something that Australians have always wanted and always cherished. Um, and I think that's why we'll cut through. Yep. Now, uh, I think we mentioned on the definition of liberal, I think that the name liberals is certainly something that's been a one of the biggest issues amongst voters that we've seen on social media. Now, uh, mm -hmm. you defined liberals there, but in Australia, of course, it, it is a very different definition. Uh, the conservative uh, liberal party we have here. Uh, why did you choose that name when so many yeah. people say they wouldn't vote for you purely on name alone? Yeah, yeah. No, look, that's a great point. Um, one of the things that we determined, because uh, we're all, we're all non-professional politicians, there's not one of our national executive or our steering committee or our candidates who's ever been a professional politician. 
And we want to keep it that way. We might be elected to, I shouldn't say professional, I think the word is careerist. We're not in there to be careerist politicians as 80% of the federal parliament now is. So we looked, at, we looked hard at ourselves and said, what do we need to do to make sure we never become like those people that we dislike and we want to replace? And the number one thing, of course, is tell the truth. Tell the truth with courage no matter what the consequences. We felt that if we compromised the truth on the very first and fundamental thing we had to do, i.e. our name, how could we then go on to tell the truth about everything else? And so we, we said that whatever the consequences are, we would tell the truth about ourselves as the first and fundamental thing that we do, and that is to call ourselves a Liberal Party, um, and that we weren't going to be bullied out of that because those other buggers... Um, you know, have taken a perfectly good word and perverted it to mean what is really its exact opposite of ultra-conservative. Now, the upshot of all that has been quite fascinating because disaffected Liberal voters, of course, have no trouble with our name. They go, fantastic, you know, here's a party with progressive values that, 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 that we've been looking for in our, in our own Liberal Party, that we've been voting for for years and now voting for by default. We can vote for them. People who are disaffected Labor voters or Greens voters understandably go, oh, you know, well, not everybody. A lot of people understand what true liberalism is about and, and really get it very quickly what we're, what we're saying. Um, but for those who uh, have a difficulty with it, it becomes a, it becomes a talking point. So you've seen, you're, I know what you're talking about, you've seen on Twitter any number of people come on and say, oh, you know, why are you calling yourself the Liberal Party? It doesn't make sense. It's a terrible word and all that sort of thing. We found that's a conversation starter. And then we talk to these people and, when they, and we send them to our website. And what we find is that, that those, for want of a better word, left of centre people, when they see what we're about, um, they tend to join the party and be our strongest supporters. So we're kind of winning on both sides. I think going into, pragmatically speaking, going into the federal election that's now going to be earlier than we hoped, there will still be a large number of people in Labor seats that haven't worked out what we are, and that's unfortunate, but that's a fact. Um, I think we'll do best uh, in current Liberal held seats. If we'd had another, uh, as we expected, another year on what is going to happen, I think that problem would have been fully solved. Yeah. Um, now, you me you mentioned uh, a lot of people, again, on Twitter saying that they're not going to vote for you based on that name, blatantly mm. not going to. And you've uh, I'm looking at one example now and you say uh, you, you mentioned your policies and you talk about your policies. But uh, this particular user, they're saying they still won't support any group that calls itself liberals. And I'm sure I can find uh, other examples. Oh, you so can, is, yeah. is, there, is there no chance you would uh, change name? Are you completely you know, stuck on this name, the new liberals? Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. Because because. Um, for every one of those people you're talking about, there's a hundred people who think it's great, you know. Um, and what I say to, to the, uh, the people that you're talking about, I say, okay, I understand why you find the word liberal repulsive because it has been turned into a dark word by this current government. I said, but if you don't vote for us on the basis of our policies, if you vote, don't, you know, but rather vote against us because of one word that you don't like, uh, knowing that your dislike of that word has been engendered by the very people you hate, and you're letting them win again, you know. And most people respond positively to that. I think that at the end of the day, the people that just will not be moved probably have an agenda that they're pushing. So we find, so I guess what I'm saying is that you've got to look at, we put up, we put up a post on Twitter about whatever. You get, you get seen by 50,000 people, you get 300 likes, uh, you get 40 favourable comments, and then you get three people saying, oh, we're not going to vote for you because we don't like the word liberal. You just got to look at the numbers there and, and think, let's not panic about that. Um, if these people are genuine people, you can talk to them in a reasonable fashion 
and they'll come round. If they're not, then they were never going to vote for you anyway. Do you see what I'm saying? And that's just some of what I spoke to Victor Klein about during an interview that lasted around an hour. In fact, we'll be releasing more of that in the coming days. But what are your thoughts on the new Liberals? Make sure you have your say in the comments section below and subscribe to us on YouTube with full notifications so you don't miss any of our exclusive stories and 24-7 news coverage.